Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh, let's see if I can find where we are. Okay, so today we are celebrating True Children's Day and something called the Foundation Day for the Unified Nation of Heaven and Earth. I think our church must be famous for long titles. <laughs> <Holy Ghost. laughs> so today I'd like to talk about the meaning of these two holy days. But first of all, I'd like to just go over the fact that we have about five major holy days in our church, and we have, I don't even know actually, honestly, how many other holy days we have. But these are the five major ones. God's Day, Parents' Day, Children's Day, Day of All Things, and True Parents' Birthday. The preparation for a holy day is important. It's important that we prepare our hearts, our minds, our bodies before a major holy day to nurture and develop a longing for them. And through this longing, a tradition for celebrating a holy day is formed. But fundamentally, the most important thing to remember before a holy day is to offer your heart of attendance to your heavenly parent, your, your heavenly father, on these days. As St. Paul pointed out, purifying ourselves from everything that contaminates the body and spirit out of reverence for God is the main basic core fundamental attitude that we should have. So today we are celebrating the 54th True Children's Day. It was established back in 1960. Where were you in 1960? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So it's been around, and we're also celebrating the 26th Foundation Day for the Unified Nation of Heaven and Earth. That was in 1988. What happened in 1988? Does anybody remember a main sporting event that happened in 1988? The Seoul Summer Olympics. Yeah. So we'll be talking about that. So let's start with the, the lesser known holiday, which is the Foundation Day for the Unified Nation of Heaven and Earth. So, to talk about that, let's go back and explain more about what happened before that event took place. In 1980, the United States of America and several democratic nations around the world, they boycotted the Moscow Summer Olympics in protest to Russian and communist expansionism. They had just invaded Afghanistan and basically America was... Uh, expressing how much they disapproved of this expansionism of the communist bloc. In 1984, Russia retaliated and boycotted the Los Angeles United States Olympics. Now this is, you know, this is why they call it the Cold War. No shots were fired, but a very clear intent of aggression and resistance was expressed in these actions. But in 1988, both the East and Western Bloc countries unified centering on Seoul, Korea. Was that a coincidence? I think not. So, at that time, our True Father, the Reverend Sun Young Moon, who we refer to as True Father, declared this holy day and mentioned that it was a day from which the earthly world and the heavenly world began to be unified having the meaning of the opening of the Day of Hope. A lot of times in our church, we declare things before they have actually happened. So for instance, we go back, and we talk about the foundation day for the unified nation of heaven and earth. Is it unified? No. But after this, three years after that, the Soviet Union collapsed. The Berlin Wall came down the next, day, the next year, and several other events happened around the world that people could not imagine would have happened. For instance, the abolition of apartheid in South Africa. Nobody could imagine that was going to happen in their lifetime. I was, um, my um, uncle was uh, working for the uh, diploma diplomatic corps out in South Africa. In fact, he wrote a book about South Africa. Um, so he was working f um, as a um, foreign consultant out there. And I remember talking to my aunt when I was a teenager about apartheid because it was a big deal back then. 
and um, how we have to free Nelson Mandela and we have to abolish this disgraceful discrimination in that country. And she was saying, yes, that's true, but it's never going to happen in yours or my lifetime. And it happened the next year. <laughs> and I didn't know all these events were going on and how these um, powerful forces of the universe were being you know, set in motion by this incredible man called Reverend Sun Young Moon. But, but this is, you know, the proof is the pudding. Proof in the pudding. So then what about the True Children's Day? That was established on the foundation of Parents' Day that was established earlier on in that same year in 1960. So on that foundation, True Children's Day was formed. So what is the significance of this day? It signifies that God and true parents had their own true children. It signified that all humanity now has the potential, the potential to be engrafted to a true family. And it signifies that a fallen person can comfort the heart of God by becoming his son or daughter. So there are <coughs> fundamental understanding in our church is that God is missing his children. The human fall was not supposed to happen, but the result of the human fall is that God is missing his children. And we children are missing our heavenly and true parent. So that divide is basically the source of so many atrocities and difficulties and calamities that have happened in this world over the last thousands and thousands of years. <clears throat> so the three fundamental tenets of our church then is that God is the grieving parent of all people. We are the children who can understand God's grief. We have that capability. We have that capacity. We have that ability to do that. And we are the children who can therefore comfort the heart of God. In a uh, speaking tour in 2004, Reverend Moon said this, and I'd just like to read it because it says it better than I could ever say it. God created human beings as his children. What then is the connection that binds each of you to God? It is the love and the heart between parent and child. Yet, human beings having lived for thousands of years, under the influence of the fallen realm are still slaves in our hearts to false parents, to false love, and to false lineage. If we are to escape from this yoke, we must constantly live lives of true love, practicing forgiveness, and always giving to others. God is struggling in the extreme to pull us from the position of adopted children to real children whose hearts are connected to his. He has grieved along with history more than any of us. So this is kind of shocking, I know, to people from the uh, Judeo-Christian faith in that we are taught to understand that God is this all-powerful, omniscient, omnipotent God. God can do anything but the reality is, even though God is all-powerful, but God has endowed each and every one of us with a portion of responsibility that He will not violate. He will not take away your portion of responsibility. That is yours to, to mold, to become a co-creator in this universe. And the, res the result of losing our connection with God, losing our relationship with the heart of God has meant that we are fumbling in the darkness trying to figure out how to be happy which is what we are programmed to, to, to do and yet we are lost in knowing how to accomplish this and so we are fumbling all over the place doing all kinds of crazy things making up all kinds of crazy laws you know, convincing each other of all kinds of crazy ideas 
And yet, fundamentally, the one thing, the one thing that can secure, that can guarantee our peace of mind is our relationship with God, our Creator. And having lost that means that we ourselves have been lost. So reconnecting ourselves with God is our fundamental purpose at this stage in our life. So again, Reverend Moon is trying to express this. We may have a lot of confusing problems, but there is only one fundamental problem in our hearts. It is the fact that we have lost our parents. Humankind's loss of the parents and Heavenly Father's loss of his children has to be recovered. It is our foremost priority to re-establish that lost relationship, to regain the lost happiness, to repossess the lost joy. So in conclusion, on this holy day, the day true children, how do we live as a true child of God? Spend time with God. What does that mean? Reflect, meditate, pray, read, study God's words, enter into discussion. That's what we're going to do next. <laughs> Spend time with God, and that doesn't mean on your own necessarily. It can mean being with people. Seeking to understand God's heart and love. This is something we can reveal, we can get exposed to us through prayer, through meditation, through reading the holy texts. To develop a full heart of love, and when I say full, I mean it's important to love our parents, to love our brothers and sisters, to love our spouses, to love our children. That's what I mean by a full heart of love. I remember the experience I had as a teacher in Seoul, Korea, several years ago, just before my son was born, um, who was the first child in my family. Uh, didn't know it was going to be four more after that. <laughs> but um, I remember the day before, I was, in a, I was in an English class, and it was uh, exam season. And I remember thinking to myself, it was a frustrating time as a teacher. First of all, I wasn't very good at it. I had had no official training as a teacher. And second of all, um, I didn't really appreciate my students all that much, I have to be honest. <laughs> I didn't feel they treated me with much respect, and uh, I didn't really know what I was doing, to be honest with you. But at that time, it was a very confusing time in my life, and I just um, you know, started family with my, my, my wonderful wife, um, and she was due to give birth to our first son. And uh, right in the middle of this exam season, there I was, standing there, you know, thinking to myself, ah, oh, you know, here we go again, I'm not really appreciating my students, blah, 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 complaining, complaining, complaining. And then, someone rushed in and says, you've got to go to the hospital now! <laughs> so, I dropped everything, went with my wife, our son was born that day, and it was such an incredible experience. I remember going back to the uh, classroom, a day later or two days later and just thinking oh my gosh every single person in that classroom is so precious maybe not to me <laughs> but to somebody and as a representative of each and every one of their parents because their parents were in America or in Europe as their representative I had better do a better job at appreciating each and every one of them so I feel that that wake-up call, by having that experience as a father, to be a father for the first time, and to go through that emotional experience, was transformative in my life. The students became, they transformed from brats <laughs> to precious heavenly creatures. <laughs> in, in just, you know, basically it was, it was a moment. It was a moment. That transformation took place through that experience and that was the result of it. So developing a full heart of love, you know, is, is, is basically loving all the different dimensions of love. Loving your parents, loving your brothers and sisters, loving your spouse, loving your children, all the different realms of love. And uh, what else can we do as a true child of God, to become a true child of God? 
We can use our gifts and talents for the sake of others. Everybody has gifts and talents. Everybody's unique in the universe. That's why we all disagree with each other. <laughs> because we're all so different. And that's a wonderful <coughs> thing. But we have gifts and talents that we can share and we should not lock inside of ourselves. We should find out what they are and we should be able to share them with the people around us. As Jesus said, be the light on a hill. Shine out. Don't <coughs> put yourself in a closet. And to bring God's lost children, who happen to be our brothers and sisters, home. And when I say lost, I mean we've been disconnected from our heavenly parent. We don't really know what we're doing. We're trying to figure it out, but we don't really know unless we can connect ourselves back and plug ourselves back into God. And then that way, with the help of our parent, we can receive the guidance that we need to figure out what we can do in this life. So I hope that today can be a transformative day for each and every one of us, and that we can appreciate this day, the uh, True Children's Day, a holy day in our church, and that we can um, participate and practice how to live as a true child of God. Please join me in prayer. Heavenly parents, true parents, we pr really appreciate this time that we have together. It only happens once a week for a few hours. And during this time, we have an opportunity to connect with you. We have an opportunity to connect with each other. And we have an opportunity to reflect on our past week and to redetermine whatever it is that we feel we need to do for this coming week. So we pray for your guidance in each and every one of our lives. We pray that you can steer us, guide us, just like a loving parent does, and that we can be responsive to you as obedient children, as obedient children are, and that this relationship between you as our parent and we as your children can really hold us in good stead, and that we can be the light that shines out on the hill and casts its light over others so that others can do the same thing for their own lives. We pray that this will be a great week ahead of us and we thank you for this opportunity. We offer this prayer through the name of Christ our Lord, our Jew and our man. Uh, please uh, discuss, uh, spend some time uh, discussing this and uh, this is really a great moment, so don't lose it. <laughs> <laughs> thank you.